Robin and I are going to take a look at the 1979 modules right now. Uh, so we've kind of put together a patch. Yeah, this was pretty fun. Yeah, I don't. Um, we haven't really worked on a multi. I mean, other than the Suzanne Chiani patch that we kind of did, that was we worked on that together. Um, but yeah, we kind of just put different parts together. Yeah, this was uh, this was a little bit different than the previous two shows. Um, but it was, it was pretty cool, you know, going through each one and figuring out what, what we wanted to get out of it. So we're first going to start off with the digital resonator and the modules that I'm pairing up with that are the programmable wave complex waveform generator, the 259R clone and a uh, multiple arbitrary function generator, uh, the MARF and uh, also an envelope from the uh, quad function generator model 281. So to start out with the digital resonator, I have the poly mode in um, the second section, uh, which I believe is a stereo mode. And, um, and then the type of resonance I have is the modal resonator. Um, so if I bring in, uh, so I have some pitch coming from the MARF uh, that's coming from a 16 step sequence. And so if we bring that up, I guess this, this is what it sounds like without the pitch changing. So the pitch is going into uh, the complex or the principal oscillator side of the, um, of the 259. And the pitch is also going into the pitch input of the digital resonator. Um, and you'll hear that kind of that ping, which is coming from uh, from the uh, pitch input. Uh, I also have a um, the reference or sorry the uh, all pulses out uh, section of the MARF going into the uh, strum section. So yeah, I like that funky. Yeah, get that in there. Um, and I have the position uh, CV input. Um, I have a, a, a 281 envelope just kind of cycling pretty quickly. So if I bring that in. So, yeah, that's kind of the what we have going on with the digital resonator. Uh, so if we we'll bring, bring those down, that's yeah. cool. Um, and then, so now we're going to transfer over to the uh, dual algorithmic oscillator, uh, by 1979. And, um, what's really cool about the, uh, uh the DAO is that it has built in, uh, VCAs and envelopes. So if you're working with a smaller system, um, kind of have a full voice, within the oscillator by itself, as long as you have some triggers. So all it takes is a trigger input and you can trigger that envelope into its internal VCA. Um, so we're kind of dumbing it down, but I don't know, I, I call it dumbing it down by just using that we're doing a kick um, for one of the oscillators and a snare for the other one. But um, I don't know, sometimes it's funny with, with the, uh, with these modules like yeah we can get kicks and snares from other places but it is also kind of nice to like have some good representation of it and yeah. like and we can patch it up really quickly and these these are t roland tr808 kicks and snares so that, oh, yeah i mean that's pretty cool you know we were kyle and i were kind of joking earlier that a kick and a snare seem like a very basic thing to do with this but it they are two of the um, very many, many different synthesis algorithms in this. So they're just as valid, of course, yeah. as all of the other ones. And and that's actually why I bought this module too, is for the, the kick and snare. So I think that these are, are really, really cool. And I and I'm uh it's interesting how quickly you can bring some great rhythm with such a simple approach to programming a drum machine. Yeah. So um I've First, uh, so coming from the MARF, I program some uh, pulses. So I have a um, output pulse one going to the kick input or the trigger input of the uh, kick oscillator. And we have the decay set to, I think, 15. 
and on the, the uh, on the internal on, yeah the internal the internal decay on the the AO sec- top section for the kick drum we have the the uh, decay set to 15 and the attack set to one and of course the VCA turned on and then uh, and then I programmed the output pulses two to go to the snare trigger. And to get that nice deep 808 kick, we have the timbre turned up to, I'd say almost fully clockwise. It would be maybe in the four o'clock position and color is fully clockwise. And for the snare, we have color fully clockwise and timbre at about the two o'clock position. Yeah, so... Sounds good. Yeah, so then if we... Let's bring uh, up those other two to hear those sounds together. Yeah. Yeah, so we got those going. And then we... um, Yeah, we decided to get weird. Very weird, very fast. uh, (laughs) With the uh, stereo microsound processor from 1979. Yeah, well, let me tell you how we have this thing set up. So this is um this is a cool module, it's very big, so it made it easy to program as far as our fingers go. We have the position knob set to about nine o'clock, and the CV attenuator at about two. We have the input turned up and the output turned up to the same, almost fully clockwise, and then the green size is at about two o'clock. So we on the, on the top section, we have um we're modulating we're going to modulate the position from the beginning of it and move toward its end and then we have uh, the grain rate set kind of low and the shape set around the a little bit past the middle and the reverb is turned all the way down so the sound source for this is the duophonic pitch class generator the 260e which is a very strange module and a mouthful and a mouthful and it's <laughs> it's doing a shepherd tone um which we are gating with the 281E uh, quad function generator. And we're taking the pulse outputs from that section of the 281E into the quantized random voltages C, section C and D of the source of uncertainty, the 266E. And then we're sending those out to modulate pitch, position, and reverb in different ways. And it's going through the... Um balance modulator as well yes thanks i I neglected to mention that it's going into the balance modulator section in ring modulator mode and the um, frequency set to uh, one kilohertz and using the internal reference source so i'm going to bring that so without so that's what it sounds like Sort of like a carnival of your horrible <laughs> dreams, right? We're, we're excited for uh, the second uh, It movie to come out, right? Yeah, this uh, something wicked this way comes <laughs> kind of thing going on there. So, that, yeah, let me turn that up. So what we're doing with that is uh, we have, we, we want to get some kind of high-pitched sound. So it's in the 260Es in the quantized uh, barbershop mode. So as it moves through, each of the pitch class is going to give a, a, a quantized output instead of a continuous output. So that's kind of important for this because as we gate it with the 281E, we want to just kind of grab those notes. And so that sounds kind of at a high level. Okay. Now let's hear it with some modulation turned on. So what that is doing first is um, bringing random to the reverb amount. Yeah. And I I neglected to mention an important thing, Kyle. Um, The 281E is being triggered by the... uh, The 248 is going into the time time and triggers 2TT, and then we're getting a divide by 4 clock output going into the 281E. Yeah, so every time the, the snare hits happen... Um, those are being divided, and that's what's setting off this. Uh... So next, we'll bring up the modulation of position. So now the uh, 266E is modulating reverb and position.
And now, are you ready to get really, <laughs> really crazy? We're going to modulate pitch. <laughs> so the carnival of your nightmares has... <laughs> Okay, so we've got all the different patches together. Are you ready to hear them all come together at the same time? Let's do it. Okay, so first we'll bring up the digital resonator. I really love that. And now let's bring in the DAO with the kick and the snare. And then let's get freaky with the, 260, the 260E and the SMP. Yeah, sounds good. I like the uh, uh, the reverb coming in and out on on the SMP. Yeah. Getting very dry and then wet. I'm gonna try turning up the gain rate a little bit. It's a little bit more crusty. mess with the shape. Right. So you're turning that down so now that's basically at its so, minimum. Yeah, I think that goes from sine to triangle, but I can't remember. That was a cool. Turn it all the way up. Whoa. I'm gonna hit freeze. Just the grain size. What will that, uh, where is that? The grain size? <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, like I said, I've, I've never messed with the clouds, but this has been really, really fun to play with this. and tweak a lot of the different parameters of the clouds of the SMP, like the time buffer for the incoming audio recording and the frame size. And with the craziness of the pitch modulation of a very simple tone from the 260E, you're getting this really wild jungle sounds, right? I mean, that's... <laughs> Almost sounds like the predator sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we need to get to the chopper, right? <laughs> it's kind of frightening. That's great. So I'm going to turn down the SMP. And let's change a little parameter. We'll change the color on the kick. out a little bit of the boom. Turn that back up. Yeah, that's, less, a, that's classic 808 kick right there. Yeah, less res kind of takes down the resonant boom. Yeah, that's it's like African Bombata 808 right there. And then on the snare, if we turn the timbre up. so we can turn the frequency of the kick. Yeah, what you can hear there too is the uh, um, the quant because we have the quantizer in that as well, right? Yeah, it's, the quantizer is turned on, right? So that's where you hear that stepping in there. So on the on the 
digital resonator, Kyle, you're, you're modulating position with the 248, but not modulating a lot of a lot of other things like um, frequency and brightness. So can I start turning modules? Yeah, let's do it. Turning knobs and see what happens here. So I'm going to start by messing with the brightness knob. So it nearly takes yeah. it out. If we turn it down. Ooh, it distorts kind of, or it's squelchy. And then the damping knob, kind of you work that with. Yeah, those ones. So if the I turn, damping and the bright kind of, I... They're related. I'll turn uh, yeah. brightness all the way up and damping all the, almost all the way down. And that's what we get. It's cool. And then position, just kind of sweeping the knob a bit. Whoa. So that's, I'm fighting your modulation, I realize, yeah. as I move the position there. So I'll play with structure now. Yeah, structure tends to have the most effect. Um, I mean, I guess, I mean, yeah, you know, they all work in tandem. Bring that SMP back in. Yeah. I think this is the very first song I've made that has any kind of beat. 